Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got a video about unloading the ship's guns. Uh, we recently released a video on 5-inch guns. Uh, be sure to check that out, there's a link in the description. But uh, we got a ton of comments on that, as we have on some other videos in the past, about, well, can you unload these guns once they're loaded? And uh, we were getting so many questions, we decided, shoot, let's throw together a five-minute video and get it out there. Uh, it's been on our list for a while, but the number of questions we've been getting recently tells us, yeah, it's, it's time to make this happen. So, uh, the hoists for the five-inch guns and the 16-inch guns run in reverse. So, if I wanted to roll this powder back onto the elevator and send it back down to the magazines, I can. If the shell had been hoisted up this high in the uh, open spanning tray, I'm pretty certain we could just run the hoist in reverse to get it down, along with the other projectiles that might be stacked up under it. Uh, however, I suspect your question is actually, can we pull this stuff out of the breech of the gun? Uh, and the answer is more or less the same for both the 5 inch and the 16 inch guns. The simple answer is yes to the powder, not easily to the shell. So what do I mean by that? Well, with the five inch gun, as soon as you drop the breech, an extractor grabs onto the rim of the powder canister and will pull that out. So yeah, it's real easy to get that canister out. Likewise, uh, when we drop the breech here, uh, after firing, the propellant bags would be completely burned up. But if we don't fire, the propellant bags are still in there, and in theory, one could reach in and grab them. Although they tend to have a carry handle on the front and not on the back, and uh, these things are taking up, they're 18 inches each, so six times that ends up being nine feet. My arms aren't quite that long. Theoretically, there's some sort of tool down in the magazines, there are brass hooks that they can use to pull these bags out of the aluminum canisters. So potentially you could unload the powder if you wanted. The shells for both the five inch and the 16 inch guns are a different matter entirely. How the heck do you get those out? And, and uh, I don't believe you can. Each shell has a brass base ring near the bottom of it. Uh, and that ring is a little bit wider than the diameter of the shells. And the idea is when you ram that shell in there, you're trying to push it in so hard that the base ring engages the rifling. So at that point, it is pretty solidly in the rifling of the gun. Uh, and it's probably for both the five inch and the 16 inch gun, too far in there for you to just grab. So, there, there doesn't seem to be any easy way to extract that projectile, and even if you manage to, the base ring has been uh, worn away. It, it has ridges cut into it now from the rifling, uh, so you can't reuse it. Uh, so you, you'd just be throwing it overboard. The only easy way to unload one of these guns is put in a partial charge and fire it off. And both the 16 and the 5-inch guns had smaller than full service charges that they could fire off to clear the barrel uh, or for training exercises. So it's entirely doable and completely reasonable after the ceasefire has been given that uh, you will then receive permission to clear any of the guns that are currently loaded. This whole concept of uh, unloading a loaded gun is actually where the idea of firing salutes came from. So on an older sailing ship, there was a tool that was sort of ladle shaped that you could remove, use to remove the projectile, in this case a solid ball, from the end of the gun. But it was much easier when you were sailing into a friendly port to show that you were emptying your guns and were not a threat by firing all of your guns. This shows that the barrels are empty after that point. So, uh, it then became the practice to fire a salute. And when it became less common for you to walk around with a loaded gun, the idea that you are loading a blank charge and firing the salute as you come into port is still showing deferential that there is no projectile in here. See, we're shooting bangs and there's nothing coming out. Um, 
So th this practice goes back hundreds of years as the way to clear a loaded gun. So let's say you have some failure while firing the gun. You close the firing circuit and nothing happens. Well, you don't open the breech and stick your head in there and see what's wrong because you might have what's called a hang fire, which means that uh, maybe the primer didn't ignite everything, but there's still smoldering embers in there that will ignite it. Uh, and opening the breech and letting air flow in there may be what it takes to set that off with an open breech at that point. Uh, however, maybe you do have a legitimate misfire in which the primer went off and it didn't hit the powder charge, or in the case of the five inch guns, the firing pin strikes the primer and fails to detonate anything. It's a soft strike, it doesn't compress it enough, or the, the, uh, or the primer isn't functioning properly. Usually your, your next step would be for a 16 inch gun, load a new primer and see if that works. For a five inch gun, uh, try and drop the firing pin on the primer again and see if that works. Uh, at that point, likely what you're going to do, and I haven't read the whole manual of drill for clearing a, uh, clearing a misfire, but likely at that point you have to wait a period of time to make sure it isn't a hang fire, and then you can open it and try re-extracting stuff and checking uh, everything out. Regardless, the projectile is still stuck in there, so you, at this point you're not trying to remove the projectile to do it again. The projectile is jammed in there. You're going to load more powder or a new primer, whatever it takes, to fire that thing out. So this is how it works with uh, semi-fixed ammunition and bag guns. Uh, so the 16-inch and the 5-inch guns, basically. With smaller projectiles, starting with the 12-pounder uh, in English parlance or the 3-incher uh, in American parlance or 76 millimeter, then your uh, brass base ring is actually encased in the, the uh, shell casing, which has all your powder in it. So it's not until the combustion happens and the projectile is being ejected that it is going to grip the rifling. Or, in some cases with smaller rounds, like the 50 cal uh, or the 20 millimeter, they don't have a brass ring on them. The bullet itself cut by the rifling as it goes through. It's a soft enough material. So for our smaller guns, the 20 millimeter Orlicon, the 40 millimeter, those uh, you can extract a fully loaded round. Thanks for watching. Have you ever had a misfire in anything you were shooting? Tell us about it in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. There's a link in the description if you would like to continue supporting us. We really appreciate it. It allows us to make the videos we do. Another way to support us is by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. And remember, if you have any questions at all, drop them in the comment section. We try to read them all. Thanks for watching.